Hey, what's up guys? It's Ben here, and welcome back to a hands-on introduction to computer programming. This is episode two, and in today's uh, episode, we're going to be talking about output, we are going to be talking about variables, we're going to be talking about data types, and finally, we're going to be talking about input, and we're going to be going over uh, the programs that we wrote in the last episode once we have finished talking about uh, all of these topics. So in the last episode, by the way, if you have forgotten, we talked about the difference between a programming language and a scripting language. We talked about uh, versions and standards, and then we also learned how to compile and run a C++ application and how to run a Python application. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in with our first uh, topic here, and uh, we're going to be talking about output here. So output basically is really kind of a, a blanket term. It can refer to any kind of way to get information to the user, whether uh, it's through terminal output, whether you're putting stuff on screen, whether you're playing a sound, turning lights on, so on and so forth, uh, like moving a robot, I guess you could even uh, call that output. Um, but the most common way of output and the, the way that we're going to be focusing on, especially like entirely in this series, is uh, through terminal output, which is just basically just text. It's actually only text. So uh, we saw an example of this in the last episode, um, but we're going to be writing two new programs that are specifically uh, for output and testing out output. So I pulled open Genie here, and I'm actually, we're going to be writing in Python for this first uh, file here. Now, uh, one thing I will note is I turned up the uh, the font size in Genie here, and actually I'm going to go ahead and maximize here. There we go. Uh, I turned up the font size because I realized uh, while editing the last video that the font was just entirely way too small. Um, so I bumped that up so hopefully people can uh, see that a little bit better. Um, okay, so in Python, putting out output is incredibly easy to put it out here into the, the terminal down here like we did for our uh, Hello World application. It's incredibly easy. All you have to do is type in print and then in quotes whatever you want to put after that. Now it doesn't have to be inside of quotes if it's like a variable, which I'll be talking about in just a second here. But if you want to put in, say, like hello world, you have to put that in quotes and it'll print out exactly hello world. So I'm gonna I'm gonna save this and I'm just gonna name this output output if I can type. And then if I run it down here, you can see it says hello world, which is exactly whoops which is exactly what our first application did. But we can change this to say, uh, hello uh, Mars, why not? There you go, hello Mars. Um, and that's how you that's how you do output in, in Python. Now I can type print, um, you know, my name is George. Run it again, and you can see that there is a break in the line. There's a line break right here between, uh, wow, hello Mars and my name is George. Um, so Python automatically puts in that line break for you uh, so you don't have to manually break the line. Now print here is what's called a statement and I will be talking about statements in the next episode um, but th th it's kind of important in Python because in Python 3 print is no longer a statement, it is a function. If you remember when we went to uh, the website for the Python 3 interpreter, it told us that we were missing parentheses in call to print. And that was because in Python 3, print is no longer, it's no longer a statement, it's a function now. And that's how it is in a couple of different languages. Um, it, it can be a statement, it can be a function, it can be, you know, a class, an object, whatever. Um, but in Python 2, it is a statement, but we can still put our output in parentheses even though it's in a statement, which, I mean, I'll talk about in the next episode. Um, but you can see, if we put it in parentheses, it works the exact same way. So for Python, or I'm sorry, for uh, for C++, what we're going to do is we're, just, we're basically just going to rewrite the application that we uh, made before. So I'm going to actually preemptively save here, and I'm going to do output dot cpp there we go and basically i'm just going to be rewriting what we what we wrote in the last episode which will be hash include io stream now 
This is important because in C++ there is no built-in way to output to the terminal. There's no built-in way to output, there's no built-in way to input to the terminal. Um, you are given pretty much nothing in C++ out of the box. So the IO stream, this is, this is what's called a library, and I'll talk about libraries in uh, a couple of videos here. Uh, it's, it's a little ways down the road, uh, little ways down the road. Um, but IO stream is a library that it, the IO stands for input output, and that's exactly what it is. It gives you functions and uh, classes and all kinds of objects uh, to handle input and output. So you need to have IO stream uh, included here. Uh, then I had using namespace std semicolon, and the semicolon is a actually as most languages use a semicolon to end the line um, just so that the compiler doesn't have to uh, figure out where the line ends. Um, in Python it does not use that because Python is very reliant on line breaks and um, indentation and whatnot um, so it's it's sensitive that way uh, but you don't have to put in uh, semicolons and I personally prefer the uh, the web or the uh, the languages that have semicolons and braces and all that. But anyway, the using namespace std just makes our code a little bit uh, shorter in the in the long run. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you what it'll be like if we didn't have that in there. Uh, let's see, what else did we We had int main, and I'll talk about uh, the int part in a second here. But this is basically just our, our main body of the program. You can think of it that way. Then we had return zero, which just, well, actually I'll go over return uh, in a future video. But basically just the zero means that everything went uh, swimmingly. Nothing nothing went wrong. In here, this was this is the kind of main part of it. We had C out, and then these two leftward facing uh, pointy brackets. I still don't know what to call them. Um, but that, that basically, you can consider these to mean it's feeding information into something. And in this case, it's feeding the information that we put after that, which was, in quotes, hello world. It feeds this into C out, which is our output. It's not really a, a statement. It's Technically, it is an object. It's a class of sorts. Um, but it's, yeah, it's kind of weird that way. But we're feeding hello world into C out in this case. And then we feed in uh, end L. Now this is again not really a statement, um, but end L just ends the line. So if we were to save this and recompile, so output.cpp, oh, output. And then run that. You can see it tells us hello world. Now let's let's put another C out here on a new line. We're going to do my name is George again, uh, and I'll not capitalize the end there. My name is George. Now if I compile and run this, you can see there's a line break in here again. Hello world, then a line break. My name is George, and this line break here and this line break here both come from the end L at the very end here because that means end line. If we if we omitted that from here and we recompiled and ran that oops, I guess I have to actually run it uh, you can see it comes up as hello world and then without anything separating it my name is George. Now this can be useful in a couple of situations which we'll see uh, in a minute here whenever we talk about input um, but for the most part, you're probably going to want an endl in there somewhere. Now, if we if we didn't have an endl, say down here with the my name is George, if I can figure out where my carrot is, there we go. If we didn't have that, it ends up looking pretty ugly. We got the hello world up here with its own line break, but then we have my name is George down here, and then all of the stuff for my my Linux prompt down here. So it ends up looking really kind of gross, so it's usually conventional to put an end L at the very end of your uh, program if you're outputting anything there. Okay, so that's all for output. Let's talk about variables, and in order to understand really what a variable is, you have to have a, a kind of basic idea of how RAM works, or, or it, 
a lot of people refer to it as memory. Uh, random access memory is, is what RAM stands for. And basically you can think of, and this is way oversimplification, but you can think of RAM as just a big long line, just one dimensional line uh, with every little dot, if you will, having its own address from zero to however many, uh, technically however many bits uh, or bytes, I think, actually, of RAM that you have on your machine. So if you have, like, four gigabytes of RAM, that's a, a lot of bytes and definitely a lot of bits. Um, but that's an incredibly basic idea of RAM that can allow us to understand how variables or what variables are. Variables are just little parts in that big, long line of RAM that have names assigned to them. And these names, they're really just references to a specific address in your RAM, in your memory. That's basically what a variable is. Now a variable is more than just a name. It has a content or data in it, so content, and it has a data type. Now a data type we'll talk about in just a second here, but it basically dictates how the variable is interpreted and uh, how big the variable is, because like how many bytes in RAM it takes up. So that's the basic idea. Uh, behind variables. They're basically just named little blocks of memory in your in your RAM that uh, hold a value that you can then go back to and reference, you can change it, or you can access it, basically. So in C++, uh, making a variable is kind of a two-step process that you can kind of condense onto one line. There is the declaration of a variable that basically tells the computer, hey, here's this variable of this type and this name. I want a little bit of uh, memory. I want you to allocate some memory for me for this variable. And then there is assigning it a, a initial uh, value, which is called uh, an initialization. Pretty simple. Which basically says, okay, you know that piece of memory that I asked you to allocate a little bit earlier? Okay, now I want you to assign this value to that variable. So in C++, you can do this two different ways. You can do it on one line, or you can do it on two lines. And the way that you initialize, or uh, sorry, the way that you would declare a variable in C++ is first you start with its data type, which again we'll talk about later, and I'll give you a list of data types. But in this case, we're going to do the, the simplest data type out there called int integer. Basically, it's any whole number. You can see main down here also has this int, so it's incredibly common, and it's just, like I said, a whole number. And then you give it the name. Now the name can be uppercase, the name can be lowercase, um, the name can have a couple of different symbols in it. It can't have like a semicolon in it, but it can have uh, dashes and underscores and whatnot. Um, it can mix uppercase and lowercase, but the two main things that you can't do with it is you cannot start it with a number so we can't say um, three blind mice for example we can't do that and we cannot have spaces in it so let's say number of dogs this is not a whoops if I can figure out how to use a keyboard this is not a valid variable name it all has to be one word now one convention that people do to put in uh, multiple words into condense it into one word is by using something called camel case and you'll see this a lot so if I you know going on number of dogs for example I could do number of dogs where the O is capitalized and the D is capitalized and that's completely valid and a lot of people use this camel case uh, format but anyway so what I could do is I could close that line off with a semicolon and I could go down another line and you know in here I could have like you know see out, you know, cats are cool, whatever, uh, and there we go. And then I could come back to this number of dogs and be like, okay, I haven't put a value in there, but now I, now I can. So number of dogs equals five, and that's completely valid code. I can do it that way. Now, if whenever I am declaring the variable, I want to set a value right there, I can do that all on one line as well. So coming up here, we have int number of dogs, and then I'm going to put an equal sign, and then five. Now the equals is, a lot of people call it the assignment operator, which is, you know, that works. 
and uh, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It takes the value on the right and it assigns it to whatever is on the left, which is usually, hopefully, usually a variable name. Now for Python, uh, assigning a variable and declaring a variable is a little bit simpler, but at the same time it kind of makes things a little bit more difficult. And I'll talk about exactly why that is in just a second here. But if I wanted to declare a variable, I have to have a value for it set, or uh, an idea of what I want the value to be right off the bat, and then all I would do is I would just put in the variable name, in this case number of dogs, and then I would do equals, and then whatever value I want it to be. In this case, I want to have eight dogs. No semicolon because it's Python, and if I think if you put a semicolon in it, it'll give you an error. So, number of dogs, and then just automatically just assign it the number that you want. You can see that we didn't put in any kind of data type in here. We didn't have to initialize it, or uh, rather, we didn't have to declare it. We just put our value in and went on with our lives. Now, we can output the value in a variable by just doing print and then without quotes number of dogs and you can see I can print that out and if I run this output you can see it gives me 8 which is the value that we gave it right here in C++ uh, same kind of concept I just come in here and instead of putting it in quotes I'll just do number dogs Compile that, run that, and you can see it gives us a 5. Pretty, pretty easy. There we go. Finally, one other thing that we can do with uh, variables, particularly integers and uh, number related types of variables, is we can do basic arithmetic on them. So let's say I had number of dogs and, you know, I had five dogs, for example, but later on, uh, let's say I got another dog. I got a corgi, for example. I would just do number of dogs. It would be it wouldn't be number of dogs plus one, right? So I could I could take this, and I meant to cut that, but there we go. And I could just put that in my C out here. And if I recompile that, you can see instead of five, now I have six. Now if I just wanted to increase number of dogs and didn't want to have this plus one everywhere I went. What I could do is I could do number of dogs equals number oops number of dogs plus one. And that'll work just like that. I still have six. I didn't add one in my C out here. But there's an even easier way that I can do that in C. All I would do is I would take the variable that I have, and then I would put plus plus at the end which just means add one to this variable. So now, if I recompile, you can see I get a six there. Now if I wanted to subtract one, it would be the same kind of thing, except it would just be minus minus. Recompile, and boom, now I have four dogs. That easy. In Python, it is pretty similar, but there's a couple of extra uh, things that you can do with it. If I had number of dogs, and I did uh, plus one print number of dogs plus one a little bit scatterbrained on that one ah whoops python output I don't know what I'm doing you can see I went from eight dogs to nine dogs just like that and if I wanted to increase without having this plus one in here again I could do number of dogs equals number of dogs plus one I could do that that works just fine or I can do plus equals one. And that does the exact same thing, but instead of one, let's say I wanted to get three new dogs. Boom, now I have 11 dogs. So you can put anything that you want right here. You can, and you don't have to just do plus equals. You can do minus equals, for example, which would give me five dogs. You could do times equals, for example, 24 dogs, or you could do uh, divide equals slash equals whatever which gives me two dogs I don't know why I have two dogs but that's weird anyways that's how you can uh, do that in these two different languages one thing that I, I just remembered that you can do in C++ you can also do the plus equals in C++ so you know 5 plus 3 G++ plus plus, there we go you can see I can do the uh, the plus equals here but I cannot do a uh, number of dogs plus plus in 
Python, for example, that will give me a syntax error here. Yeah, you can see invalid syntax. So you can you can use this plus equals operator, uh, or you know again, multiplier, whatever you want to do. Um, you can use that operator in C++, but you can't use the plus plus and minus minus in uh, Python here. Now I mentioned earlier that variables have three different attributes to them. They have their name, they have their data, and then they have their data type. And the data type, like I said earlier, is how the computer decides how much RAM the variable needs and how the computer will interpret the value in the RAM. Because in the RAM, all it is is just a bunch of on-off switches, binary, effectively, ones and zeros. But we don't see it as ones and zeros, at least most of the time we don't see it as ones and zeros. We see it as, for example, 3.14159, pi, basically. We don't see the, the bits there, we just see the number itself. That's where a data type comes in. Now there are a couple of different data types and the number of what are called primitive data types or built-in data types. The number of those will depend based on your your programming language. So for example, the data types that are included in C++ that are primitive data types may not necessarily be primitive data types in Python, for example. But usually it follows a set number of, of data types. Uh, and these data types are int or integers, then we have float, floating point numbers, doubles, which are basically floating point numbers, but they're more precise. Then we have characters, which are just one byte. And then we have Boolean, which is just one bit. So let's see an example of all of these. So I have int, for example, which we had number of dogs. Okay, and that a valid uh, value for that would be five, for example. So let's do a, a floating point number, um, oranges. You know, you could cut an orange in half, so let's say I have 2.5 oranges or even 2.25 oranges. Okay, we can do that. Uh, double would be a floating point again, but it would be a bunch more uh, digits, which honestly I don't know enough of pi to put in all of the digits, but let's say 3.1415926653. That's about as far as I can get in pi. Now, double goes on for quite a bit longer than this, um, but like I said, that's about all I can do of pi. Uh, if I wanted to continue all the way out to a double, it would be pretty far out there. Okay, so character, char, uh, let's say, you know, favorite character, whatever. Now, this is kind of important. In C++, a character, a single character, a single byte, is signified by single quotes. You cannot put a character in double quotes. Likewise, a, you can't put a string or a, a bunch of different characters in a row. You can't put that in single quotes. So I'm going to do A, just for all intents and purposes. Now this is a, an ASCII character, which you can find a whole bunch of ASCII tables on the internet, but basically it's from 0 to 255. And ASCII fits right in there perfectly fine. It's, uh, it's an 8-bit byte. You've probably heard the value uh, 256 before, or even 255 before. It's just an 8-bit uh, number, basically. Finally, we have bool, which is on or off, which is generally interpreted as true or false. So, you know, in this case, likes cats. Likes cats. There we go. And, you know, true. I could say true. I could say false. I could even say 0 or 1. In this case, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to say true. These are all examples of the main primitive data types that you are going to run into. But these are not the only kinds of data types that are out there. There are also data types that come as part of libraries called classes, objects, basically. So the best example of this would be a string. So in order to use the string data type, I would have to include the string library which again I'll talk about libraries later. But if I came down here and say I wanted to put my name in, I could do string name equals and then in double quotes Ben. Just like that. The string is not a primitive data type. See I had to bring in the string uh, library in order to get the data type to work. Now another element of 
these uh, data types here is whether or not they are constant or not. Now a constant variable is a variable that can be set once and then it cannot be changed ever again. Trying to change it again is going to result in a bunch of errors being thrown. So I think the best example would be for pi, for example. Uh, obviously pi is not going to change anytime soon. So if I wanted to declare pi as a constant variable, 3.141, blah, 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 I would just put const at the beginning uh, right after the data type. So it would be double const, then the name of the variable, which in this case is pi, equals 3.141, so on and so forth. Now, another thing that we can do in uh, C++, especially with integers, is we can say that it is a long int or a short int, with which basically just gives the maximum value, uh, it gives it a little bit more room, so the maximum value is a little bit higher. So uh, generally they recommend that you put the long and the short before the, uh, the actual name of the, the int, for example. So let's say I wanted it to, it to be a long int. Now what I could do right here is I could actually just get rid of the int part, and that would work just fine. Uh, I could also put in another long there, for example. And this would be double as long. Actually, it wouldn't be as, I don't think it would be double, but you get the point. It'll also be, it'll be a little bit longer. Now, if I wanted to put int in there again, I could, but I don't need to because it already knows that it's an integer. Likewise, I could do short, and I could do short to int, and that would be a very small integer. Now you can see that I'm doing all of this in C++. I put the short short int there, the float, the constant, all this stuff. I'm doing all of this in C++. Why is that? Well, in Python, I didn't need to put any I didn't need to put any kind of variable data type declaration in there at all because Python is what is called a dynamically typed programming language, which means that I could put in say x equals 3. I don't need to put the data type in there at all. And in the same way, if I came down here and I said, you know, x equals Ben, this is completely valid in Python because I can dynamically change the data type of a variable whenever I want to. In C++, that's not the case. C++ is a statically typed programming language, which means that, let's say, my number of dogs, I'm gonna just change that back to an int. Number of dogs, I can't call that you know, a number of dogs, I can't make that into Ben. I can't do that. So let me get rid of all of this and show you that that's going to give me a pretty nasty error, basically. C++ O output. And ST, wow, erasing everything. There we go. Yeah, you can see it gives me an error right here. Invalid conversion from const car to int, which const car with the asterisk or character basically can yeah you get the point uh, const character is pretty much what a string is it's just a, a constant that is a, a character really in a, a character array but we'll talk about arrays uh, a little bit later but C++ is statically uh, statically typed so I can't change this variable I can't change an integer variable to a string variable if I wanted to let's say I wanted to convert um, like I had a, a floating point oranges again 2.25 if I wanted to make oranges into an integer I'd have to make another variable that was you know int oranges you know and then just do oranges take whatever's on the right and put it in whatever's on the left and that would work just fine you can see uh, actually nothing's gonna come out but you get the point so that's how you would have to change it that way. You cannot like come in here and do like, you know, 3 and then 3.5. You can do that in Python, but you can't do that in C++. It will always stick with the data type that it was given whenever it was created. Okay, so now that we know about variables and we know about output, let's talk about input, getting information from the user. Now, just like output, input can be brought in, in multiple different ways. It can come from the terminal. It can come from uh, keyboard presses on a window, mouse clicks, mouse movement, camera, microphone, whatever. But in this case, we're going to be using uh, specifically terminal input. So stuff that comes from the keyboard uh, down here in the, the terminal area. Pretty simple, straightforward. So the way that you would 
input stuff in a C or in a, a Python here is quite easily. You would just make a variable. So in this case, you know what? We're not going to do x. We're going to do name, and we're going to assign raw underscore input, and then we're going to put in parentheses we want whatever we're going to print out. So the prompt. So let's say your name, for example. There we go. And we're just going to put that in parentheses. And then, of course, because I wanted it to print out exactly just your name, I put it in quotes. And then down here, you know, I'm going to print out name. There we go. Now, if I were to run this, you can ask, or you can see it asks your name. I'm going to put in Ben. And you can see it prints out whatever I gave it name. So it just takes whatever I put into this raw input and it just puts it into that variable. And then going back to output, I just outputted whatever was in that variable right there. In C++, it is a little bit different to a degree. So obviously you need to declare your variable first. So in my case, I'm just going to be working with integers this time. And I'm going to do number of dogs, of course. Now, in C++, you don't have the option to automatically put out the uh, prompt. So you would have to do a C out statement. And I'm going to do number of dogs right there. Now I'm not going to put that end L in there because I want it to be on the same line. Now, whenever I want to input to, uh, to number of dogs, for example, I would do C in instead of C out. And then I would do the two pointing brackets, but this time facing right because I'm going to be feeding whatever comes from C in, I'm going to be feeding that into, in this case, number of dogs or whatever my variable is. So I'm going to compile that and run it and you can see it asks me for the number of dogs. So in my case, I want to have 17 dogs and it doesn't do anything because I didn't tell it to output, but if I wanted it to, I'd do number of dogs of dogs. There we go. And L. I swear I can type. There we go. 17. Boom. 17 dogs. So that's how you would input to like an integer, or if I wanted to have, you know, a floating point number in there, I could do that. You know, 5.2 dogs. And you can see it gives me 5.2. And just like before, I can do arithmetic on this. So, you know, plus 4. I can do 5.2. Turns into 9.2. I can work with this input the exact same as I would any other, like if I had just come in here and just gone, you know, number of dogs equals five. I can work with it just like I would any other variable. For inputting strings, it's a little bit different. So we have our, our string library up here, and we do string, and I'm going to do name. Now if I did this C in here, and I'll get rid of this, this plus and really all of this, change it around a little bit. If I did C in here, I can do that, and that'll work perfectly fine. I can put in my name. It's Ben. There you go. That works perfectly fine. But if I wanted to put in, say, Ben High, all I'm getting is Ben, because C in, it only takes whatever comes from that first little bit there. So what I would want to do in order to get, you know, Ben High, for example, is I would want to use a function called get line. And get line takes two different things, C in, which is going to be where the information comes from, so in this case C in, so our input, and then where the information is going, so name. Put a semicolon there, compile that out, and now I can put in ben high, and ben high goes into our variable here, which is uh, name, there it is. Okay, so one more thing to note in the Python code, whenever we have this raw input here, I have I have set up here number of dogs, raw input, all of this stuff, and then it just prints out what I want. Now, I can run this, and this will run just fine. Number of dogs, 17 dogs, and you can see it prints out 17. But what if I wanted to add 3 to that? Well, because of the way that raw input works, whenever I put in 17, you can see it gives me an error because raw input will always input a string or it'll always give a string which is just a, a set of characters so for example name Ben that's a string so I can make raw input give me for example an integer by just putting int and then putting all of the raw input stuff 
inside of parentheses. Int is a function that takes a string, for example, and spits out an integer version of that, uh, that input. So in this case, raw input. So now if I do Python output and I do 17, you can see it gives me 17 plus 3, which is 20. So there's int, there's bool, uh, there's float, and so on and so forth. There's also string, which is str. So if I wanted to make sure that raw input was a string, I can do it that way. Okay, so there you go. Now you know about input, you know about output, and you know about variables and their data types. In the next video, we are going to be looking at control structures, and we're going to be going a little bit more in depth on these statements that I keep talking about. So we're going to figure out what those are all about, and then we're going to be figuring out how to kind of control the flow of our application so that it isn't completely linear. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.